All right, so in this one, we're gonna start a new app. We're gonna be building an app that is going to work as our blog. And through building this app, we're gonna learn a lot about Django and some of the things that it can do. We're not gonna go into too much depth, but we're at least gonna make a blog, a very fully working blog. And we're gonna be basing it off of a lot of things that we will learn from the Django admin itself. Like I said before, the admin is a really good place to kind of learn from as far as designing our own application. Um, it's just they've done so many smart things that you will have to do in your app to make sure it works. Now, something to note about the Django administration is this is for your staff. It's not for your users. You don't want to have your end users doing it. You want to have maybe 10 people on your staff at the most, maybe like 100. But if you're starting to get a lot of staff members using this all the time, you should build your own custom solution, which is not going to be a whole lot different than this blog, but there will just be some minor changes. Of course, something like that. If you're really interested in learning that, let us know, put a comment somewhere, and we will um, point you in the direction of how you can build something like that. Okay, cool. So apps are um, not to be confused with the project, right? So the project itself could be called an app, like it's a web app, right? You're building a web app, you're building a web application. Um, but as far as the little components that build up the project or the main web application, those are called apps. It's a little confusing, but that's essentially what they are. So they're just little components that build up the entire actual project itself. So they're called apps. And in our case, we want to create a new app that's going to handle a lot of our blog related stuff. Um, I'm going to call the app posts. So the first app that we're going to make is posts. So posts being the blog post that we're actually going to be doing. So inside of there, we'll have some stuff for that. So let's go ahead and do it. I'll do Python manage.py and I'll do start app and we'll call it posts. And in this case, I'm calling it plural posts, right? Because the app itself is going to hold everything that's related to all of our Django posts. So let's go all of our blog posts, everything that's going to be related to that. That's what we're going to have in there. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go back into sublime text. Now that we have this post apps in here, we would notice that the post folder or module is actually in here for us, right? So we have a few things in here that are of note. We have migrations in it, admin, apps, models, tests, and views. So migrations are, well, they're very similar to what we saw before when we actually ran migrate. It showed us some stuff, so we'll see this a lot, and we'll come back to it in a moment. In it, of course, is just making the posts folder into a Python module. Um, so just subtle things about it. There's not going to be anything in there. Admin, well, this might ring a bell from what we've been talking about, but admin is how we're going to associate this app into the admin. Apps.py, this is a new thing from uh, Django that is just allowing you to do some app configuration if you need to. Um, in this case, we're not going to touch it. It's fine just how it is on the default. Models.py, this is something that we'll use quite a bit, and this is um, how we're going to actually like map our data into the database. Test, this is a place where you can run tests, so you can actually design tests to automate testing. Um, this is a part that we're not going to cover, but it is something that um, is definitely worth looking at because running tests are um, an important thing to do, but we're going to be doing a lot of manual tests, so you'll see those tests in action versus running the code-based version of it. And then views, this is um, something else that's pretty big, is actually showing us how something is displayed inside of an app. We'll come back to that quite a bit later. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is actually jump into models. So models is the core of the app, in my opinion. Well, views are actually pretty important too. So models and views are really the important part um, because we're using something called an MVC, so model view controller. So that's the, the name of the framework Definitely take a look at, at like a, a Wikipedia article or something on MVC um, so you can understand that, but it just stands for Model View Controller. So model is like how we're gonna be associating what we want in the database. So like we have a post. Let's actually just do it so you can see an example. I'll do class post and it's gonna be models.model. So this is a Python class, and each class of this is an instance of that class, which is going to be an object. So these things are related to how we can actually work with this data. But first, I want to add in attributes of this post so we can actually work with it. 
So let's say, for instance, I have a post, but I want to make sure that I have a title for it, right? So each post would have a title, and we can give it a field. So we'll do models.char field, and we'll say max length equals to 120. Actually, I'm going to leave max length out for a second, and we'll come back to that just to show you. So we've got this models.char field. Now, what char field is a character field, sometimes referred to as car field, but I call it char field because that's what it looks like. Uh, but it is a car field, and um, this is where we would name like a title. So it would have all sorts of things related to any text, right? It's not a text field because it's not going to be huge. And also we can kind of have a max length. And then we can also just say the post itself. So I'll just call this content and I'll do this models as text field. So these two are just slightly different. Text field we'll see is a lot bigger than char field by default. Um, and we can also set max length on either one. But with char field, that's what you'll use most of the time. Like username, you'd use char field. Um, title, use char field. Um, a variety of things there. And let's just create a Unicode here. I'll explain the Unicode in a second too. And we'll just return self.title. Now, if you're on Python 3, you are going to be doing virtually the same thing. But instead of Unicode, you will do str. That's all. Though that's one of the biggest differences in Python 2 and 3 as it relates to Django. Um, all right, so we've got post, title, and content. Um, I also want to add in a timestamp, so like when it was actually entered into the database. So I'll say timestamp equals to models.date time field. And I'll say auto now equals to true false. And then auto now add equals to true. Since we're doing timestamp, let's go ahead and do updated as well. And I'm going to reverse these two and then explain them. So auto now means like every single time it's saved in the database, this will be set. Updated will be set. So last updated is probably more accurate for the name, but we'll just call it updated. And then timestamp is whenever it's added into the database initially, not when it's saved, because you can save this over and over, which we'll see in a second. Um, that's It's only going to be set one time. So it's going to be saved and set. That's it. Cool. So we've created our first model in our first app. Now we need to actually put this into our Django project. So we go into settings.py inside of the Django configuration folder. And inside of installed apps, we're going to just come underneath here and write posts. Now post is related to the name of the app itself. So we just added into installed apps. This is our own custom app. Um, and it's sitting right alongside of a lot of Django apps. And since we've created an app, we can actually do python manage.py make migrations or actually let's do migrate first we'll do migrate and we'll see that we've got well we've got a, a little bit of a spelling error so let's go back into our models and i know it's a spelling error because it says all this stuff but it also tells me where it is line 11 and post line 11 it says date tm field which it should be date time field oops we got a little little glitch there with uh, sublime text and so both of them are supposed to be date time field I'll try that again and now we got this migrate. Notice it says it's now showing me these errors, right? So char fields must define a max length attribute. So let's add that back in like I was originally going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and migrate again. And now it's saying your models have changes that have not reflected in a migration, so won't be applied. So what that means is that models inside of this app changed. There was something different about them that Django has recognized, but we didn't put it in the database. So the database and our Django project are not in sync with each other. They're not together. So we're going to make them in sync with each other by doing python manage.py migrate, or excuse me, make migrations. So make migrations allows us to say, if we check out here, it's saying, hey, Django, we made some changes to our models. These are the changes but it doesn't say whether or not you should make them into the database. It just says, hey, changes were made. These are those changes. So to make them in the database, now we do python manage.py migrate, and those changes will now be applied into the database. And now we actually have this post model in the database. Cool, so that's our first model and our first app. 
If you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. In the next one, we will talk about how to bring this model into the admin specifically so we can actually store some data using it. So again, if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.